All right, we are going to give Steve Lukather a call, a.k.a. Luke. And again, don't decode this number if you can. That's really loud. So um, let's try it. Here we go. Are we ready? Yep. Hello? Hello. Is this Mr. Lukather? Uh, last time I looked, how's it going, man? <laughs> Doing great, buddy. It's Ethan. Uh, how's life in your world? Uh, busy, but great. Well, that's always you know, a good thing, yeah. We're having a blast out here on the road, and the band is killing us. We're, you know, most of these guys are my childhood friends, so that part of it, for me, is really great. And the musicianship is, you know, pretty strong. If You're if right. I say, if I may say so. Yeah, myself. absolutely, you can. I, 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 I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about the rest of the band. <laughs> well, I mean, when, really, a, I'm, uh, when a guy of your caliber is like everybody around me is a hell of a lot better than me, that definitely says something positive. Hey, it's, it's you know, I, I'm a some part of the whole, as they say. Right. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a group effort, man, in every aspect of it. And, you know, we just... We're at the point now where the band is so tight, we could just have fun with it, smack it around, improvise, and see where it goes and still maintain the integrity of what everybody wants to hear. I mean, we're playing pretty much record versions of all of our songs at this point. You know? I was about so to ask, I mean, when you've been doing this for uh, almost 50 years now, when you get up on stage, do you go, I just want to change it up and have some fun for myself, even on the big hit songs? Well, I do that anyway. I right. mean, to me, it's like I wouldn't, I, beyond being honest, I mean, I played these songs a whole hell of a lot of time. I mean, I, I recorded Hold the Line when I was 19 years old, okay? I'm not 19 anymore. Right. 119. I'm 119 now. <laughs> I'm, just, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, yeah, we changed it up a little bit, but it's, it's gone full circle. We've, we've torn them apart and put them back together again. And now with this with this band this configuration, let's go back to the egg, man. Let's go. Let's start. Let's listen to the records again and go like, oh right, yeah, that's good. And then take that and have fun with it. What well, that's what we do. And you've been on an epic run. It's almost your 50th anniversary with Toto. Uh, you've done close to 50 shows since February with the Dogs of Oz tour. It started in Mississippi, but your second show was in Clearwater, and so is your final show, which, uh, first of all, that's well, that brilliant. The, private, the, the, the the one we did at the same venue we're going to play was a private show. It wasn't open to the public. So ah. this, is, this is a return to play for all the people that live there. I was going to say, you've got you know two ends of this tour with a basically free paid vacation in Florida, which is uh, definitely not a bad thing to do. Uh, listen, I love Florida, and I love being out there in the crowd. I mean, that's one of my favorite venues. By the way, the best food in any venue I've ever been in. Really? They they even won an award from Polestar, which is the big uh, magazine about uh, touring. Yeah, I know Polestar. And uh, it's pretty funny, man. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, they won the best catering in all of America. <laughs> Well, so that's we great. Forward, we all look forward to having some food there. Most of the time, I run from catering. It's like, oh, God, no, please. I was going to say, a band like Toto in this day and age, have you ever shown up to a venue and you just the food has been so crap that you had to, like you said, run away? Um, I don't really want to answer that. because <laughs> then it, it, Let's just say that I avoid catering at this point. I'm on the road like 200 days a year almost. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, there's a lot of that same, same every night, you know? Yeah, it definitely gets, because, you know, people that make those huge bulk meals, they're like, well, we'll all do enchiladas or, or chicken or something. And you're like, oh, no, it's, you know, it is. It's a rider and they have the same food every night. Uh, and, and at varying degrees of quality, you know? I mean, I've had the, uh, you know, salmon that tastes like a, fucking, uh, a charred lung. <laughs> It's like, it's like, how can you put this out here, man? You know? uh, but, uh, you know, it's like I just there's certain foods that I just go, oh, I can't, you know? Right. Uh, you got, uh, we're talking about the band just a minute ago. You got Greg and Shannon back in the band as you're talking yeah. about the musicians. Let's tell us about all the guy, everybody in the band that you surrounded yourself with now. 
Well, I mean, a lot of the guy. I mean, Joseph and I obviously go back. Joseph Williams and I go you know, way back. You know, here's the deal. People go, why are you still doing this? Oh, well, you know, all the guys. You know, two of the guys in the band died, you know, sadly, tragically. Mike and Jeff Lacaro. And then Bobby, poor Bobby's got dementia real bad. And he, I don't even know where he's at right now. Last time I talked to him, I said love for his birthday, you know. And, uh, you know, our original bass player, David Hungate, is, you know, retired in a farm somewhere in Nashville. Um, you know, I'm keeping, you know, this band will always be David Page and Jeff Vaccaro's band because that's the band that I joined when I was just a kid. And I'm holding I'm holding the torch of leadership and keeping this band alive, along with David Page is still with us, but he's not medically able to tour anymore. The doctor said, you're done. You can't do this anymore, man. He had some medical. He's fine, but he had some medical things happen to him. And he said, "Okay, you're." But we still. He still comes out and sits in sometimes when we're on the West Coast, or you know, if he's out and about. But uh, you know, he and we run the business together. We talk on the you know on the phone a few times a week at least. But uh, I miss out here. I put together a killer band of players that have worked with us and people that we've known, and we know we're going to play the music right. I mean, I've been around the block with all of this, you know. We tried a lot of different versions of this band. It's like the 18th version of the band. Wow. <laughs> Since the inception, you know. So I've been the only guy that's been there from the first demo to the today, you know. And I, I don't know. I think I always believed this band would get this shock that we've gotten. And this is sort of like the third act in our life, you know. I mean, everything's on the up and up right now. We're doing two million streams a day. That's sixty-five million a month, and it's going up, and, and everything's going. We're headlining big shows all around the world. You know, big, you know, eighty-five thousand people in Mexico, fifty thousand in Holland, and we're doing all arenas and stuff. And doing the journey stuff has been great for us in the United States. We've been doing that for a few years, and that's going to be coming to an end. But the band, we also they only work three days a week, so we want to play all the time. Now I got to be working at least five nights a week, man preferably six, you know, three on, one on, two on, you know. Um, I, I, sitting around in the hotel room on the road is a drag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I've done it, you know what I mean? I've been doing this a long time. It's not like the um, 70s and 80s party days in the room, so it's just not as much fun oh, anymore. no, man, no, man, we're a bunch of, you know, I go to bed early, get up early, you know, I'm, I, I haven't had a drink in 15 years, you know, it's like, I mean, we don't do that anymore. I mean, you know, guys, you know, some guys can have a couple of cocktails. I don't care. You know, just my personal choice is to keep myself together. And I feel great, man. I mean, everything's going really, really well. And the band with Shannon, you know, he kind of, I've known Shannon for 25 years or more. And, you know, he comes from the same pedigree. He was the number one studio drummer in Nashville. Played him, played him a million hits. Man. He played, played on all Taylor Swift's hits. You know what I mean? Wow. He produced Michael McDonald. He was with Fagan. Don't fag and I mean, you know, and he was with us for many years. And his groove is the closest to Jeff Picaro's that I've ever heard. And yet he still puts his own twist to it. And then you got a guy like Greg Fillingaines who Paige picked personally to uh, sit in his chair. And he's been in the band in the early 2000s. We did a couple albums and we did a lot of tours together. And when the last situation uh, faded out, I um, he was just the right guy. And, he, and he's family. I've known Greg since we were both kids. You know, I was with Boz, and he was with Stevie Wonder. We were both like 19-year-old kids, you know. And we met, and then we went off to play with all the Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson stuff, you know. And then we played on a million records together. And he's family. I love him to death. And he sings his ass. Everybody in the band is like a lead singer, so the vocals are killing. Yeah. And uh, really better than, uh, maybe better than ever. I, I saw you uh, with the Journey Tour in Orlando, and man, it sounded just like the freaking records. It was so tight. Well, man, we, you know, we ain't the prettiest people in the world, but we played pretty good. <laughs> you know? I mean, w when I say that, I mean, we're not teen, teen idols. You know, we're older men. You know what I mean? We're not like the elephant man, but we're not like Justin Bieber either. You know? <laughs> no offense to Justin, God bless him, but you know what I mean? This is right. What I'm saying in terms of, or Harry Styles or somebody like, you know, the girls go, ooh, you know. We get a lot of musicians and we get a lot of young people, believe me, believe it or not, coming to these shows because the Africa thing went crazy. I don't have no idea. But I'm looking at this as a great gift from God, you know. It's like, all right, guys, I'm going to give you a little, a little, a little, a little push here to make this thing happen. And it just went crazy and it just brought a whole other generation of people to come see us. 
and our all of our catalog records of the 17 albums that we've made or whatever is flying out the you know, the door. The streaming is insane. I mean, it's, we couldn't. And I, when I took over management eight years ago, I made a great deal with Spotify, so we're getting the way more money than we ever did with a regular record deal. But a lot of people didn't make that deal because they didn't have the foresight to go. You know, this streaming thing is going to happen. You watch. And at the time, the record company was like, yeah, yeah, streaming, whatever. I was trying to get the rights back to our first album, uh, which is something that they weren't going to give anybody. But at the time, there was a five bands that were signed in 1977 to start ownership, getting ownership of their albums after 35 years. Well, that didn't happen. So I, well, I did a little bait and switch. I go, okay, you're not going to give me that. I want a better royalty rate in the United States. We made you guys hundreds of millions of dollars. I, I sold them on the whole thing. Told them how I was going to make them a million dollars on a box set, which I did. And they gave, I said, I, I, just give me, I'm not going to tell you the percentage because if I do, well, I'll get in trouble. But it's the best percentage anybody could ever get before they realized what they had and they stopped anybody from getting that deal again. There might be a hand, one handful of people that got the deal that I got. So, uh, and that's in perpetuity. So, and now that, you know, we have billions and billions of streams. Yeah. So, I mean, this is going to be paying my great grandchildren, you know? So, I mean, that after all the years put into this band to finally have this, you know, last act in my life and career be going so well with everything going up instead of down. It's not like I'm in needles, California doing five sets a night in some casino, <laughs> you know, drunk out of my mind at the fifth set at four in the morning with a bunch of kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Miserable, you know, everything's like, it's really been amazing what's happened to us in our career at this point. And we're having a blast. John Pierce is my oldest friend in the planet and our bass player. We were born on the same block. Our mothers were pregnant at the same time. And he went on to be a A-level studio guy, played with Mick Jagger, played with Tom Petty, and he was in Huey Lewis in the News for 30 years. I love him. I can know, love he's Huey. He's my best friend. So, so, like, I look around the stage, even though it's not the same guys that started the band, it's the people that grew up with us. John was in our high school band. He played with us, and he did a million records with me and Jeff and Paige and all this stuff. And, and the same thing with everybody on the stage, except for Steve Majora, who's the new kid, who's in a band with my son called The Effect, with Phil Collins, son playing drums. They're going to do some shows with us over in Europe this summer. But uh, he's an incredible singer and player, a second keyboard player. He's a great keyboard player. And so the band is really kicking, and so it makes it a lot of fun. And the hang, man, it's just been the most relaxed, fun, even tempered. Everybody smiles and hangs out every day. Uh, it's been a blast, man. I, uh, going back to the horrible. women screaming for you, I got to tell you, my wife, when we saw you with Journey in Orlando a couple years ago, my wife was screaming like the teenage idols. Uh, she was like, <laughs> why? She was like, well, I hope they, because you were her mom's favorite band and she grew up with you and her mom passed away, you know, like 10 years ago. And so she was just like, oh, wow. I love this. And she grew up with you guys oh, as a kid. That's so sweet. Well, tell her thank you very, very, very much. I will. She was always like, I hope they play 99. And I, I don't, I don't think you did because it's not one of your favorite songs. But she was no, like, "That's, one of my that's a lie." <laughs> we are, we are playing '99, and it's, and that was, you know, I said that, shit, you know, a hundred years ago. I don't like the song because it was silly lyric or something. But I've really grown to love it again. Awesome. I enjoy, I enjoy playing that. You know, and it gets a great reaction because nobody plays music like that. Right. I mean, we we play all over the map. I mean, we could play the hard rock with those, you know, the, against anybody. And we can also, but we also are funky, and we also play a lot of different kinds of stuff. And I love a great ballad. I love a great, you know, pop tune. You know what I mean? If it's done well. Yeah. Uh, so that's the thing about us is they couldn't really ever bag us. You know, like, oh, you're this, you're that. So they just discarded us. They being the the hipster critics back when we first started. Ah, screw the critics. But but, but now we now, now well, we've outlived our haters, man. I mean, yep. the kids today don't give a sh with some. 75 year old guy said in 1978 you know what I mean what the f most of those cats are dead anyway that's what's funny about it we outlived them so I'm, I'm enjoying having the last laugh without having to say anything I was looking at the history of the band that you were talking about earlier with Dave and the Barcaro family and you all went to Grant High School in the valley yeah. outside LA if you look at the roster of other uh, Grant High School alumni, you got Kevin DeBro from Quiet Riot, Mickey Dolans, Jeanette Napolitano, Ricky Ragman. Is that just a talent oh, yeah, farm friend, out there? Jeanette used to hang out. She used to be a cheerleader. She was going out with one of my best friends. Jeanette was a cheerleader? 
Yeah. <laughs> she, she doesn't like to probably talk about that. <laughs> well, I can see her. She's had, hot. By, by the way, had no idea she had any interest in playing music. She used to hang out at rehearsals. She was great, and I've seen her since. She's great. I'm really happy for her. She's a really, really wonderful woman, man. She's great. <clears throat> but, I mean, at the time, you know, there were a lot of people. Michael Landau, famous guitar player, my best friend since we were 12. You know, he's you know, one of the most recorded guitar players. He plays with James Taylor and Steve Gadd. And, and he's, a, he's a legendary guy. I mean, there's a lot of great musicians that went to our school. Man. I remember Kevin Dubrow. He was two years ahead of me. I remember me, you know, but he, I didn't even know he was a singer. He's just hanging out, you know what I mean? Like we all had bands and stuff. We play on the on the quad uh, during lunch break, or we play the homecoming dances when we put our still life band together. Which Steve Picaro's band it used to be Jeff Picaro and David's band. That's where I met all those guys. And uh, so we've been playing together for since I was 15 years old. Man. Wow. I was looking. And some of the other guys have been playing since I was single digits, you know. <laughs> uh, I was also looking. You guys did the uh, soundtrack for the original Dune movie. How different That's was right. that from writing a, a rock album? Well, at the time, Total Four had just, you know, had this massive success with that, and then Bobby had to leave the band because he lost his voice, you know. And so we had to buy some time to do something until we could find somebody. And this opportunity came up. And when I heard the name David Lynch, see, I was in a David Lynch before anybody even knew this guy. I was the one. Ava Racerhead was one of my favorite movies. Oh, and yeah. that was the student film. And so when I heard Lynch was involved, and Dave wanted to, really wanted to do a legit score. Like, everybody thought, oh, Total's going to do this movie. Like, we're going to play rock music or something. To it. it was legitimate, you know, for an orchestra with some bit of a rock band thing thrown out. And there's also some beautiful ballad stuff, you know. It was a challenge to do, and we didn't have to worry about a singer. That bought us time to write the record that we wanted to do, which ended up being isolation and then uh, all the rest of it. But I had a wonderful experience. That the movie was never finished right. David quit at the end. They ran out of money, and it was never finished. So there's there's some cheesy effects that were never supposed to be that way. They just didn't – they ran out of money to actually finish it and, and put in the – so, I mean, while there's some great things about the movie, it's also really funny in places it's not supposed to be funny. Yeah. And, and I mean, believe me, I saw that movie a million times. I mean, inside and out. But it was a great experience as a one-time thing. I don't need to do that again. That's not really where, where I live. But it, as a one-off experience, it was amazing. And now the, the film is... People look back on it with a smile on their face, you know, and they go, oh, they, you know, they, yeah, there's something really fun about that movie, you know what I mean? Even yeah. though it was kind of cheesed out a little bit, you know, it's nothing like the new high slick, you know, CGI, wow, look at that thing. This is old school 80s guys, you know, and but I, I had lunch with David Lynch every day for three months. I got the original script of Blue Velvet, which had some really interesting things in it that were not in the movie. <laughs> well, and of course, you I'll, know. I'll get, let, let me let me give you an yeah. example of this, man. Some reason this thing lets you know all the Frank Boots shit where he's you know sucking on the oxygen thing, you know, and saying all that weird. Shit. Yeah. Well, in the original script, there was helium involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> if you could imagine Dennis Hopper as Frank Boots saying all that shit with helium. <laughs> 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 So Lynch, man, you know, and I've stayed in touch with Lynch a little bit because he's friends with Ringo, and I play in Ringo's band for twelve years. I adore that man, and uh, you know, and he hangs out with Ringo, and you know, so he's like, look, look, you know, you know, we, you know, we have, he, he was the greatest man. Well, and of course, you got Joe in the band now, and his dad's one of the greatest movie composers ever. Right. So the whole movie thing's tied in. Well, I remember so I've known Joe since he was fourteen, and I was sixteen. Because I used to play in another band with his brother Mark and Michael Lando and John Pierce. So, I mean, it was, it's very incestuous how we all can move in and out of each other's lives because we've always been there in each other's yeah. lives. Have but you Joe's seen one of my favorite people? And Joe was singing his dick off, man. He's really strong. There's very few high tenors at his age that can pull this off, man. And he nails it every night. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I'm really proud of the band. I mean, I think it, we pay a, a great homage to the original intent and the original people that were in the band. And uh, that's the best I could do right now. You know what I mean? If you look at all the classic rock bands of our era and prior that are maybe out still doing it, nobody has a fully intact lineup. Right. No one. Not one f***ing band. So anybody that gives me shit about it, man, you know, it's like, guys, 
if nobody showed up and nobody was interested, it would be over. But quite the opposite is happening. And the band that I got together right now is killing it. You know, so um, it might be the best version of the band since the original version of the band, you know? Yeah. And have have the, you seen the documentary on Netflix on Hans Zimmer? It goes through when he was writing the soundtrack for the new Dune movie, and it's really freaking cool to watch that guy pull those sounds out. I'd be it up. Well, Joseph, Joseph used to, you know, work for Hans. Oh, really? After after we after he left the band in the 80s, after we had two multi-platinum records with him, and he lost his voice. So he went into um, scoring television and film, uh, and he worked for Hans Zimmer a whole, as a you know one of his staff writers because he has a lot of help with those films. Um, and uh, he really got into Hans, you know what I mean? And Hans is a great kid. Crown's a great guitar player. Man, he loves guitar. He loves, he's a rock and roller, yeah. basically. But uh, he's got a really unique touch, and I'm a big fan. I love Hans Zimmer. Collectively, all the members of Toto have been on over like 5,000 albums. I think about 4,900 of them were just you. Um, are you no, one of those no, guys? No, well, I, know, <laughs> I know. I understand that that number comes from all the guys that have ever been in and out, in right. and out of the band. You know what I mean? You got you know guys like Lee Sklar, Nathan East, Simon Phillips. Uh, you know, we just kind of, I mean, I've done a couple thousand myself, you know, but. I mean, we we worked at that time when that was a real job, like being a studio musician. Like you show up every day and you have no idea what you're going to be doing. Sometimes didn't even know who the artist was. No rehearsals, no demos. Like, what are we doing today? Who am I playing with? Who's in the band? And we, you know, took these chord charts with, you know, a little bit of rhythmic notation, a few notes written here and there. It was mostly a blank, you know, sketch. And then we were supposed to turn it into a painting, which is what we did every day. We took simple stuff, rearranged it, came up with all the hooky parts, Made these records for these, you know, every day, you know, four tunes a day, so you know, and then five, six days a week for 25 years. Or something like that. So it was a muscle that we got together and we were able to do this any kind of style of music. And we just loved it. It was the greatest times of my life doing being in a band that's successful and being in like one of the number one studio guys. It was like the greatest time you could possibly live. And all these great artists I got to work with, legendary heroes of mine. I would, that's worth more than any money I could ever put a number to. Yeah. It was, what, a, what a learning experience. What a wonderful vibe. You know, sitting in a room with the greats of the greats and being a part of the creative process. I mean, gosh, I mean, I would have paid them. Was there ever an artist that wanted you to work on the record and you just you didn't want to do it with that artist? I'm Obviously, time restraints and touring, you can't do it. But was there ever somebody you're like, well, no, I don't think so? Well, I'll tell you a little bit of <laughs> You know, sometimes they wouldn't tell you who the artist was. Ah. No, they wouldn't. You know, and like a contractor would call, I need you to be at Capitol Studios 12 to 6, Monday through Friday. Can you do it? Or can you be at Sunset Sound? Can you do like, you know, four days, blah, 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 whatever. And you're going, yeah, okay, I'm not doing nothing. Well, I showed, this is like, you know, I was already, you know, the band was wailing and, you know, I was like, you know, first call guitar player. And I got this call. This guy goes, hey, you got to do me a favor, man. Can you do me a favor? Just do these dates. And I go, okay, man, I'll do it. Well, I show up and it's Richard Simmons' dance record. <laughs> and I'm going like, uh, you know, I don't know, this is when I, that's when it hit me. Like, I'm done doing this. <laughs> like, well, without, without knowing what, it, and I showed up and I, and I pulled one of the old, uh, I got to make a phone call before there were cell phones. You know, it was in the 80s, you know. And, I'll be, and I got my car and left. <laughs> 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 and apparently pissed them all off. And there's a darker story to some of this. I don't want to get into it today. You know, it's like, I, I just realized that's not playing music, man. Some right. other young, young session guy should get a shot by doing these records. Those are the kind of dates you do when you're first starting out. You do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and nothing against Richard Simmons, but it's just like it wasn't music. It was like I'm, I'm doing wall wall parts. So, <laughs> wait. <you know? laughs> But you know what I mean, you know what I mean? Right, right, not, right. It was not uh, just not why I became a musician. You know I mean, and I had already, I didn't need to be doing sessions like that. If it was somebody that I knew and they asked for me, and uh, that's different, you know. Yeah, I noticed you're uh, you're a tattoo fan with almost a sleeve on your arm there. What was your very first tattoo? It was a, a little playful little devil that Tommy Lee bought me on a drunken ranch one night in 1990. That's awesome. I'm working on a, a couple of sleeves myself right there. And yeah, that first yeah, tattoo. Well, I mean, I got to be honest with you, I haven't had a new one in 30 some odd years. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, I mean, some of it's, 
meaningful. My kid, I, my older kids are on there. Uh, there's a tattoo of one of Jeff Picard's cartoons that I have, and there's some other just silly stuff. And it was a time I went through a phase of it. You know, I, I mean, I dig it for what it is, and I, you know, people that have great tattoos. It's, it's wonderful. Man. Minor, minor age. If I start doing it again, it's like painting one door on your car. You know, it's like, <laughs> you get all up. You're like, you know, no, I can't do this all over again. I think, I think I'm, I'm done with the tattoos at this point. You know. Yeah. Um. I always like to talk. I play a little guitar myself, so I always like to talk gear with guitar players. Sure. You endorse Music Man guitars and have your own signature model. Um. Outside of some of those, do you have a favorite in your collection, like a classic Ovation Strat or Les Paul or something? Oh, I got my '59 Sunburst Les Paul. Oh. Uh, that, that I mean, that was on so many hit records, and you know, I've got a '51 Esquire. It's that's you know so clean, and you know, I got you know old three thirty five, seventy one um, Les Paul was one of my first my first great guitar that's in the Musicians Hall of Fame in Nashville now. I, I've know, been I there. I I seen that guitar. It's a great place. Yeah, that was you know I did all the early Toto stuff, the first Toto record playing that guitar, um, and. I love that guitar, but I, it's on loan to them. I didn't give it to them, but they can have it for. Like, it was. Uh, I still got some old pieces, but I, I'm a big music man guy for 30 years, and we've had four different versions. And it's my my the guitars have sold amazing. I mean, it's an incredible. People seem to dig the guitars, you know. And now we're working on the, the fifth one, you know, the L5, which will come out next year. Uh, and people collect them. I mean, I really do play them. It's the same exact guitar you pull off the, you know, at Guitar Center or whatever. I mean, I don't have a special one. I mean, if I'm not, if I'm going to use a guitar and have a signature guitar, I want everyone to, who wants to get it to have the same guitar as me. Right on. And you don't even use that many effects these days anymore. You're playing a lot more got, clean. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I got a bunch of stomp boxes on the ground, but the thing is about them, you know, it's not MIDI or nothing. So I'll use one, like, I'll have a couple different delays and I'll only use it on one song. I'll use a different one on a different song. I mean, I went through all that crazy shit in the 80s and stuff, and it was fun, but <clears throat> I like a simpler approach. My my guitar tech, Johnny Gosnell, uh, yeah, he, you know, he does all this stuff now for me. I just got to put a new one together. It's cleaner and everything, but, you know, it's just options. It's like, I, 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 I never turn everything all on. You know, that would be ridiculous, you know? Right. I got a couple different, you know, um, distortion kind of boxes that I use for a specific sound on one song, and I have different versions. And sometimes I, I mostly just use the amp sound, you know? I use a Bogner Helios, just dimed, you know? And, I, and then I manipulate the the gain either with the volume pedal or with the, the volume on the guitar, you know, to... I want to clean it up and stuff. Thank you so much for your time, my friend. Toto going to be wrapping up their tour May 8th at Ruth Eckerd Hall with the best catering in the world. Can't wait to see you at the show. <laughs> yeah, man. See you there.